welcome everyone to the EdTech Lounge. Um, if you are joining the EdTech Lounge for the first time, um, uh, we welcome you on behalf of the Network of Quality Teaching and Learning. EdTech Lounge is a community of practice and we've been running these EdTech Lounge since April 1st, 2020. And uh, our format of this EdTech Lounge is very simple. We've, uh, each week we have a faculty member who presents and share his or her experience with online and remote teaching and learning, shares their challenges and uh, their successes, and which helps the other faculty members who are joining the session. And after the talk, uh, we have uh, question and answers, so you are free feel free, you can ask questions, how the faculty has um, countered those challenges and what helped the faculty members in running their online sessions so smoothly. So before we uh, go any further, just some housekeeping rules. I would request you all to keep your microphone on mute um, during the session and also keep your cameras turned off so that we can secure some bandwidth. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, you can always use the chat as we'll be monitoring the chat throughout and we would also request you to introduce yourself in the chat let us know your name your department and the location that you're joining this session from um, with this I would now like to introduce our session presenter which is Miss Isabel Combo and uh, uh, Ms. Isabel is an academic head and a faculty member at the School of Nursing and Midwifery Kenya um, she's a nurse, midwife, and a public health specialist researcher. Currently, she teaches community health and behavioral psychology for BSCN and BSCM students. With this very brief introduction, I would like to invite Isabel uh, to take us through her journey with online and remote teaching. So over to you, Isabel. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Allow me to share my screen um, and then we'll start off. Um, so like you have heard, my name is Isabel Campbell from School of Nursing and Midwifery in uh, Kenya campus. I'm happy to be here today and thanks for Azra and team for inviting me to do this uh, talk or share my reflections. I've been attending a lot of uh, these sessions, so I know most of the things that we would, most of the experiences that we have had about um, and things that have been shared have been very similar to um, all of us. Um, so I won't repeat uh, most of the things that you've heard from other presenters. Um, that means that my presentation will be quite short. I guess I'll be still within those uh, 15 minutes and you can ask questions thereafter. I hope you can all hear me. You can all hear me? I'm loud yes. enough? Loud and clear. Cool. Okay. Um, so I'll start with a bit of information about our transition um, during the COVID pandemic, which of course everyone in Kenya started out in March. That's when we had our first case. Uh, went into lockdown and had to follow government regulations uh, to not have in-person uh, learning. Now, what that meant was that we needed to go fully online. Uh, luckily, uh, we, it's been easy to fly, to work on this plane while we are flying, as <laughs> Tashmin uh, refers uh, to this experience. One of the... I, I think the greatest advantage we've had as Aga Khan University is that we had already a uh, blended learning format of learning going on for you know several years. I think since 2017, uh, that's when we started having a blended format uh, for all our programs. Um, so our students were conversant with navigating uh, learning on Moodle. They had done some activities, not a lot of activities. Uh, mostly we used um, the Moodle learning platform for making sure that we communicate to students, we give students some activities to do, and of course we give them notes and learning resources that they required to use. So we stepped that up once we went fully online. Our faculty were also conversant with uh, using the Moodle learning platform. Uh, we had had several trainings to help 
uh, faculty to be able to do uh, both synchronous and asynchronous uh, teaching. That meant that, that while other universities were scrambling to go and prepare their faculty, uh, sort of set up an online learning environment, uh, we were able to just continue from where we are. Uh, so students were not left uh, wondering what's going on, when are we going to start learning. Uh, we just moved on into the next week of learning and did not lose time. Um, so one of the things, of course, we had to consider was that our students are very to deal with the pandemic. Um, other than that, the fact that schools closed down, it meant that every parent in Kenya became a teacher. So our students not only became frontline workers to take care of the sick uh, and deal with the pandemic, but also as adult learners with responsibilities with children and communities to look after, um, their responsibilities were increased because they had to make sure that they take responsibility as teachers for the students, uh, for their children in a lower uh, level of learning at home. Um, and that meant that we needed to think about the psychological safety of our, of our learners. We needed to help them with time management. So we had to make a lot of adjustments uh, to ensure that each student gets an opportunity for learning. So main learn, teaching and learning uh, mode was synchronous and asynchronous. So I won't go deep into what synchronous and asynchronous is. Uh, previous presenters have already taken us through that quite. Uh, but just to say some of the things we engaged in was uh, for synchronous, there was most of our lectures were done via Zoom, uh, where we did group discussions using breakout rooms. Uh, we had question and answer sessions just to confirm learning. Uh, notes and lecture recordings were posted on Moodle for future reference, uh, mostly because some of our students would be on duty while you're having your Zoom session. Uh, so we would record the lectures. We'd also make sure that we put the notes for the lecture in on Moodle uh, so that the student can later, the student who missed and was working can later access uh, the information. Now, some of the interesting experiences we had is a student who is on night duty and they are calling you at 12 midnight and they're saying, oh, I have a few minutes, I have about an hour to sit and listen to the recording. Can I call you if I have any questions? And, you know, of course you would tell them if you're still awake, uh, you would join them and help them uh, where they have challenges. So, yeah. Uh, we had to make adjustments. It was no longer the traditional uh, way of learning. Uh, then asynchronous, what we were able to do is to enable use of many activities to engage students in learning. Um, so before we probably used about 25% uh, of engagement activities uh, via online. Uh, but now that increased um, so that you had more engagement activities uh, for students, uh, mostly because, like I've already said, they're unique students in different circumstances. Uh, so you had to tailor the engagement activities uh, for students in line or with an understanding of where they are, um, what time they get. So if it is uh, something like um, an activity, you do not want to put an activity that engages the student for four hours or so. You know, you want students to do um, brief activities, but that are concentrated so that they are able to do learning within a short time, um, but diff many times and at different timings in the day. Discussion forums were many, mostly because discussion forums this time were not just about the subject or the topic, but also about themselves and the experiences and reflections uh, that they had. Uh, for instance, I teach community health. Uh, so I wanted those discussion forums uh, not just to look at community health as we've traditionally looked at it, uh, but look at community health nursing in light of what was going on in COVID-19 within their communities. Um, so the discussion forums also stand into, um, um, you know, an environment where they could express their challenges as nurses, uh, the challenges that they're having in practice, one of the challenges that uh, nurses, especially in the public sector, had in the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic was resources. Um, so they would give each other ideas how to deal with resources. Uh, also, how to engage the community. If you're living in your area, what can contribute uh, to help the community understand the pandemic better and keep themselves safe? safe. 
So we had chats, wikis, videos, notes. Uh, so I would say we thoroughly utilized uh, learning engagement uh, in a synchronous manner. Um, of course, the other challenge is how do you ensure that students are actually engaging in these activities? Uh, so whether it was a discussion forum or a chat or a wiki, whatever activity you did, uh, what we did was make sure that it is there was a participation log that was kept. Uh, if a student had not logged in for weeks, you were able to um, you know look for them, find out why haven't you logged in Moodle? Is there a problem? Uh, we also utilized our student representatives uh, who kept uh, a WhatsApp communication line so that if a student was missing in class, then you would last with the student rep uh, to try and find out what is happening to that student and whether they have any challenges that you can intervene in good time. Uh, uh, takes time. Uh, the uh, the timings changed. We, by the time we hit April, May, uh, a lot of our time timetable that we had uh, used traditionally. So we had to adjust the timetables. Uh, sometimes, as a teacher, you found yourself uh, being asked by a class that we have agreed that we are going to meet from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, instead of the usual timetable uh, timings. Um, so you found yourself teaching on Sunday in the afternoon, on Saturday in the morning. Um, so I would say one of the things that was disrupted for us as teachers is the timings. Uh, this time we have said in the next semester, uh, all students and all faculty must figure out how to stick uh, to the timetable. Uh, of course, that is probably wishful thinking. We will see how it goes. Uh, but during that time, because everyone was in a crisis, everyone was trying to settle down in one way or another, we uh, adjusted ourselves as much as we could uh, to ensure learning continued. Uh, doing things like recording sessions, uh, most of us probably were doing recording for the first time. We had not recorded sessions, and previously, if you had recorded, you probably had uh, a bit of help. So sometimes you found yourself at home on your own to do a recording and make sure it's a recording that is of quality. Uh, sometimes you had such bad internet that it took to upload a recording took half a day. So you had to ensure that the recordings are done early enough so that you're able to upload them. If there are issues of slow uh, internet, then you would take your time to upload. Uh, developing online quizzes, of course, uh, if you didn't have a huge uh, quiz bank, uh, then it means that this time you had to develop one. And again, uh, that took a lot of time. Uh, but all in all, I would say a lot of skills have been learned through this uh, uh, learning time uh, during the COVID pandemic. The advantage uh, is that we've learned so much, we've grown so much as teachers. Uh, we've learned many different ways of teaching, and we've been able to reflect on them um, and pick all the good things that we learned and anticipate these challenges so that we're able to deal with them better in future. Uh, one of the newest things that we did was online assessments. Uh, we had our summative assessment done online. This was the first time we've done it. I was increasing the days and reducing uh, opportunities of in-person learning. So we would think, let's wait until July. We see whether the government will allow in-person learning. Uh, when we realized that this is taking longer than ever, we can't wait. Uh, let's finish the semester. Let's give students an online proctored assessment. Uh, so we partnered with Medical College. They already had a Speedwell software, so we didn't have to go through the purchasing processes that take long in our MMD and so on. Uh, we piggybacked on their system, uh, and we were able to uh, prepare for exams uh, with that uh, software. Um, they already had a policy on uh, proctored exams, so we uh, took that policy, we contextualized it to School of Nursing and Midwifery in East Africa. Uh, and we presented our request to RWG so that we would get permission uh, to do the online proctored exam. And we got permission and we were able to do the exams at the end of July. Um, one of the ways to make sure it was foolproof, we ensured that every time someone accesses uh, the Speedwell software or the system, they would be given a password. And once you've used that password and you've left the system, you cannot use the password again. Uh, so students were not able to share passwords uh, or uh, get other students to access uh, the system illegally. 
Um, then we needed to identify the students so that students don't employ someone else to do the exam for them. So students had to present themselves on Zoom uh, and you confirm that that is a person, the person who is doing the exam or is in the exam room uh, is a person that is identified as the student uh, who is uh, allowed to do the exam. Uh, also to view the exam room and ensure that there is nothing uh, that is not right in the, the room where the student is doing, they only have the device that has been allowed for them to do the exam. Um, because it was new for all of us, we decided to do a mock test. Uh, that helped us to test our systems, but um, uh, most importantly, it helped the students to do a mock test and test their devices, uh, test their internet connection. Um, if a student found that they had challenges, then we would be able to deal uh, with those challenges. Some students had not gotten their bundles. We usually give students uh, free internet bundles so we were able to intervene and make sure uh, that they have internet bundles. We also established a call center. We've never had uh, a call center in our campus that's specific for dealing with student issues. Uh, so we used our program administrator to set up a call center where students would call um, and ensure that they have gotten help in good time. Um, so that was a new experience. Uh, we would say it went smoothly. Um, only four students missed exams. Uh, and those are students who we had already identified they had had challenges in the course of the year. Uh, some had already uh, applied to do special exams. So we knew their challenges and we were able to give them um, time to do exams later. So comparing online proctored exam and exams that are attended in person, uh, we would say the online program proctored exam is quite a process. Probably it's because that's not what we do traditionally, uh, but we found it's a very rigorous uh, process, especially because you're working as best to make sure it is foolproof. Um, so being a new experience, it was quite a job, uh, but we did pull it through. Uh, in terms of marking, because we had put in questions and put in answers, the answers were automatically uh, graded. Uh, so that reduced marking. If you look at in-person paper-based exam, we usually take about two weeks uh, to do marking and you have to keep reminding people the deadline for handing in your marks is this date and uh, you have to ensure that every faculty is in good time to hand in their marks and hand in their marked papers uh, and so on. So the marking uh, process was very easy with the proctored exam vis-a-vis uh, -vis the paper-based exam. Uh, the cost for online protected exam is high, especially when it comes to devices, internet bundles. Uh, so some students uh, managed, had managed before we left in March to borrow uh, laptops from a library and that was very useful for them uh, during the time of exam. Some students thought they could do the exam on a, on a phone. They found out that that was not going to be possible. Um, so yes, it required a lot of preparation for the students. Uh, others do not live in environments where they can be able to have a quiet room, so they had to look for that. Thank God we'd given them enough time uh, to identify that they are going to have um, a comfortable environment to do the exam. Uh, paper-based is, of course, low because all you need to do is print paper. Uh, you don't have to look for devices, internet, calling centers. Um, probably manpower, it requires a lot of people to do a paper-based exam because you have to have two people, you have to have an exam room, people have to, um, you know, um, all faculty have to be on campus and so on. Um, so I wouldn't say that I would love to move to online proctored exam in future permanently, uh, but I think it can be very useful, especially for midterm exams, uh, other formal formative assessments. Uh, but it's a new experience, it can be done, um, and we will be able to use it if things continue as they are uh, with more experience. We also found out that Speedwell can, you can do OSCEs, uh, clinical exam. Uh, so we will experiment with that in the course of the next semester. Uh, the other new experience we have is our virtual orientation. We have received our new students on 21st of September, so they have a two weeks uh, orientation. Before, we usually have just one week orientation where we introduce them to the campus, they meet the faculty, they do a tour of the hospital, the campuses, uh, the libraries, and so on. 
Uh, they do ICT and uh, VLE uh, training for only two days because you know they'll be back the next week and they can be able to be given individual assistance. However, for virtual orientation, we had to do two weeks uh, so that they take a full week of ICT and VLE training in order to ensure that by the time they start classes on 5th October, that is this Monday, the, the teacher is not spending more time teaching them <laughs> about ICT. Uh, the teacher is on to start their teaching uh, comfortably. So they are still going on, they're still on, uh, on online. Uh, we are doing this via Zoom. Uh, they've also been trained to use Teams uh, from next week. Uh, so it's been a roller coaster because we've had to work very hard. We have about 85 students who have reported for orientation from three programs, our master's program, uh, midway free and general nursing. Um, so for most of them, actually, it's been a very new experience. Uh, we introduced faculty using pictures. Uh, they had to see the tour of the, the resources that are available. They had to see that virtually. Uh, so it was quite an interesting experience that they are not here in person. Uh, they probably will not be here in person maybe until January next year. Uh, so interesting. It's been quite an interesting experience and we'll discuss with them on Friday as we complete our orientation and hear their, uh, their views about uh, doing a virtual orientation. Uh, it's been an uphill task, of course, for students to bond. You know, orientation is usually a time when you meet new students, new people, make new friends, uh, you know, feel the people that are going to be in your class. Um, and feel like you're actually in a university or you're in a school. So um, that, uh, of course, is not going to happen the same way that it happens traditionally. Uh, it's going to be difficult to make new friends uh, when you, all you meet, you, every time you meet with them is probably a discussion via teams and so on. Uh, but this is a new experience. We will review it and see how it worked. Um, so far, it's gone well. Um, and we'll hear from uh, the students as they close the orientation on Friday. Uh, of course, it's been funny, other than being stressful, strange. Uh, we still have had humor despite <laughs> the new experience. Uh, so the most funniest was the background noises. For me, the funniest was flashing toilets. I don't know why people always flash toilets when we are having a Zoom class. Uh, construction. Every time you have a Zoom class, for some reason, someone is drilling something uh, somewhere and, you know, you just look at it and laugh about it. Uh, in interesting interruption. We've had children coming to take place of the student and saying they want to teach. Uh, so that's been interesting. It's a good icebreaker in the course of the, the long session, probably, that you're having. Uh, students' frustration. Student has worked all night to do this good presentation and then they're trying to share and they can't share and everybody's telling them, no, click here, no, reduce, no, I don't know, remove your computer and take it where. And, you know, you just laugh because that has helped. Laughter has been the best medicine throughout uh, this uh, interesting experience. So I will end there. Unless you have any questions, we look forward to moving to our new uh, university center soon. Thank you. End of my session.